What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Um, getting into this episode of GH, this episode was a hot ass mess <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> Listen, that whole conversation between Anna and Finn was everything. I loved that scene. Listen, that whole scene was so real. Like, I totally understood everything Finn was trying to tell Anna. Because I've seen some ignorant comments in the last few weeks with people sitting there talking about, oh, a mother would, you know, would do anything for her son. First of all, they said all mothers would do anything for their son. No, all mothers would not. I'm sorry. But what parent out there is going to knowingly hide evidence that could put their child away knowing that their child is guilty? Like, you're not you're guilty of murder. Like, these are serious charges. You sent a gunman after somebody. You think parents would sit there and knowingly accept something like that? Not many that I've seen or heard of. Hell no. Not mine. Please, let me go out here and hire a gunman or something and my mother sit there and hide evidence. No, she wouldn't. The hell she would. Hell no. Not if you got some sense, she wouldn't. How wrong with you? <laughs> like you gonna sit there and knowingly let your child commit all these crimes, knowing they're guilty as hell, and you're just gonna sit by? You're enabling is what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing, and you're putting yourself in legal trouble if it ever got out that you knew and you hid evidence. You're gonna be facing a host of charges too. Now, why put yourself through that? Duh. Um, like I just don't get the thought behind some of these comments sometimes. But like, I hope y'all joking. <laughs> I was like, I hope y'all joking. <laughs> Please tell me if your child ever came to you or you found out your child did some illegal nonsense, you going to sit there and cover that up? It depends on how illegal it is. I mean, it depends. Like, if it's murder or something like that, no, I'm not covering that up for you. If it's something minor, minor, you know, really look like minor, I might. I might be inclined to look the other way. But something like murder, attempted murder, any major offense, I'm sorry, but you're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> you're going down i'm sorry i'm not going to be that type of parent to sit there and enable your bullshit no i will not because then you're just going to create bigger bullshit for me to no mm -mm. nope 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 handle your business take responsibility you did the crime you do the time period um so yeah so finn was not happy he was not happy that anna basically you know tampered with evidence well, let me not say really tampered, but withheld evidence because she feels it's her duty or whatever to protect her kid or whatever. I'm like, Anna, no, you're doing something completely wrong. Like, seriously. And I'm glad Finn was letting her know, like, so if this wasn't your son, would you have done this? If this was somebody else? Like, think about it from an objective point of view. You know what I mean? Like, if this was just some random Joe Smo. You know, would you sit there and turn him in? Would you, you know, do what you're doing for Peter? I doubt it. For me, I doubt she would. And Finn is so sick of Anna right now. He's over her at this point. Like he I knew he and I said this in one of my videos, too, before Anna came back. I Ben said it. Finn is going to have resentment. He's going to have resentment towards her because how long she's been gone. I said that. I knew it. And the resentment is starting to show. He was happy when she came back. But now all this stuff with Peter and stuff, it's really opened his eyes to some things with her that he's not liking. And it brought up all that resentment because I knew he was going to resent her for it. I knew it. And it's starting like how he mentioned how she was gone for six months, how they how here it is, February of 2020, and they're still not married. Mind you, when they got engaged, she left town literally right after the engagement, right after. And she was gone for six months. She talking about, oh, you didn't have a problem with it. He said, you didn't give me a choice. Basically, and that's how it was. You think Finn wanted her to be gone that long? He didn't have a choice in the matter. He didn't want her to go. She basically made the decision on her own to go, whether he wanted her to or not. He didn't have a say. And now the resentment is creeping in. Finn is over it. And when Violet came in there, you know, to get her book bag and stuff to go to school, Finn decided to bring her to school. Anna was asking him, like, are you coming back? He was like, I don't know. I might. Maybe not. I was like, "Ooh." <laughs> I said, well, damn. 
and she just looked like her face just broke like she was ready to cry she was you do a hey, you did it you did that it's like the theme of gh right now is all about people trying to put their kids first trying to protect their kids their family basically and that's where finn is right now you know he has a daughter to think about he doesn't want peter around his daughter because he knows peter is guilty he knows it he know it and he know anna know but anna wants to sit there talking about some oh um the evidence against him is circumstantial if it's so circumstantial why not give it to robert i agree with him let the police determine let the da determine whether it's enough evidence to convict if it if it'll hold up in court like why are you trying to play judge jury executioner you know what i mean like you tenor what if it, if the evidence is so circumstantial why not give it to robert why not if you're so sure peter is not going to go to prison why why withhold ev evidence then if you don't think it's that important i don't blame him for walking out on her and not really wanting to come back i don't blame him like their relationship is just totally screwed at this point you know unless they could come to some type of come to jesus moment you know some type of compromise or something it's like they really need to sit down and talk so anna's happy for the moment because you know she was on the phone with robin and emma's coming back you know emma's coming for a visit and she needed that visit right about now you know to boost her spirits or whatever but i'm like anna just needs to stop being stupid like just stop i you know stop trying to protect this boy you know, and it was funny because when Finn bumped into Sam and stuff, you know, Sam could tell that he was rattled by something. And she felt it was about the conversation that they had earlier about Peter and, you know, if he knew something. And, you know, Finn basically was a little vague, but he asked her, like, what do you do when someone you love is making the biggest mistake, a mistake that can cost them everything? You know, and she knew she knew that he was talking about Anna and it had something to do with Peter. She could see you could see it all over Sam's face. She knew what he was talking about. Or she made it appear that she knew that it had something to do with Peter and Anna. Because she just wasn't buying it. She knows that Finn knows something that could possibly help her. Um, Hell, even when Spinelli and, you know, Sam were talking and going over things and all that. Spinelli was ready to get up out his chair and go to Maxie and basically tell her everything that they pretty much knew about Peter. But Sam had a good point. I'm glad Sam stopped Spinelli from doing it because everything that they have is circumstantial. They don't have any, you know, concrete proof that Peter is behind all of this. I mean, they have a good theory, but they don't have anything to back it up. And they already know that if they go to Maxie about it, she's not going to believe them because everything they got on Peter is circumstantial and it's not ironclad. So they know Peter's going to talk his way out of it. Maxie's going to believe him. They're going to walk away with egg on their face. So they have to tread lightly with what they tell Maxie. I don't blame, you know, Spinelli for, you know, wanting to protect his daughter and stuff like that and not wanting her around Peter. I don't blame him, you know, but right now you just got to, you know, be a little careful until you have total proof. And it was funny when, you know, Spinelli kind of crashed Peter and Maxie's little date or whatever, their little luncheon. And he was like, oh, can I join you guys? <laughs> uh, I loved it. I freaking loved it. Um, so anyway, Julian. <sighs> can we just get over this Wiley Jonah story already, please, for the love of all that is holy? Like, I'm just ready for this to come out. This has just been going on for far too long almost two damn years like can we get this over and done with please i'm begging this fool julian comes over to brad's apartment and when brad went you know he brought him some coffee or whatever so when brad went to go check on wiley julian little simple ass pull out a bag of pills <laughs> julian is so damn simple i'm like what is you doing bro you're making a bad situation 10 times worse. Like, what are you doing? So he decides to put, you know, open up the pills and pour, you know, pour it in Brad's coffee. Then he has this little daydream or whatever where Brad, I guess, is, you know, strung out on opioids or whatever, gets into an accident. And now Wiley has to come stay with Julian. Um, 
And when they were going to toast or whatever, Julian kept wanting him to drink the coffee or whatever. Of course, Brad gets a phone call that Lucas is awake. Um, so you already know they're happy, but at the same time, they're nervous, especially mainly Brad. Brad's nervous. Because remember, before that accident, Brad told Lucas pretty much everything that about Wiley slash Jonah. So he's probably going to be nervous that when Lucas wakes up, he's more than likely going to remember. But we already know Lucas is not going to remember that conversation. Right off the bat, Lucas is not going to remember. We already know he's not. Not for a little bit longer. You know, he's probably going to get little flashes of memory and stuff. And it's all going to piece back together. But when he first wake up, he's not going to remember what happened. We know he won't. Definitely. He definitely won't. So anyway, moving on from that. Jackson and Nina continue to play these little stupid high school games. I'm like, y'all might as well go ahead and get together. I don't know why y'all playing these games. Um, you know, Jackson and Alexis were talking about it or whatever because she was trying to get the scoop to find out if they slept together or whatever. Jackson was like, nah, they ain't sleep together or nothing like that. But they pretty much, they kiss. Um, Alexis was basically saying that, you know, is he sure that he want to pursue, you know, Nina, basically, because Nina's dramatic, which she is. I mean, Nina is over dramatic, but Alexis felt like Nina came with too much baggage. First of all, you know, I love Alexis to pieces. That's my boo. I love her, but it's a little bit judgmental on her part to call somebody, you know, baggage or say somebody come with baggage or they're over dramatic. Alexis, you're the queen diva of baggage. Look at all these men's you've been dating over the years. And you've come with some baggage with your insecurities and your nonsense. And you have bad judgment in men, I'm just saying. Um, so you're one to talk. <laughs> like your track record with men ain't so great either. <laughs> I mean, hell, she had to go see a therapist, didn't she? So obviously you come with some baggage too. So you might want to tone that down a little bit and calm, you know, calm yourself down. Um, so Jackson and Nina had this whole long conversation about, you know, they should just be friends or they should just be colleagues or whatever, because she feels like she's still in a situation, an unresolved situation with Valentine. What is so unresolved about it? You kicked his ass to the curb. You played him. So what is so unresolved? You still ain't got closure. Like you and Valentine should be closed, done, never to be reopened. I'm just saying. But it was so funny, though, because when Jax walked away to go back to the office, you could tell he's he feeling um, Nina. You could tell he feeling him some Nina and you could tell that Nina feeling him like Nina definitely wants to be. with Jax. I don't know why they don't just stop playing these games like they obviously know that they got chemistry. They know that they feel in each other. Why not just take it easy and see where it go? You know what I'm saying? Just do it that way. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. Now. Nell was getting on my damn nerves. I'm like, Nell, just take the check and go about your business. <laughs> like, seriously, she refuses to just take a win. Like, you know, she just always got to get greedy. And that's her downfall. You got to get cocky. You got to get greedy. And that's going to be your downfall. Because you don't know how to just take a win and keep it pushing. Um. So... She basically told Martin that she's not leaving the mansion or whatever. She's not going to take a dime of the quarter main money until it's a much bigger offer. So Martin was like, so what's the number, the magic number that's going to get you to sign over those shares? She told about she'll know when she see it. I'm like, you are setting yourself up for a fall. So basically, Martin thought that she still was in love with Michael or whatever. And she claimed that she's not. She claimed that she could do a whole lot better than Michael and she don't want him and she got big plans. So basically her big plan is to get millions of dollars off the quarter mains so she could take her son and just flee. That's basically her, her plan is to take Jonah and flee out of the country or whatever. And she know that she could possibly get away and live a different life without Michael finding her if she got millions of dollars at her disposal, basically. Her whole plan ain't going to work. Because for as smart as Nell is and as conniving as she is, she's stupid. She's smart, but she's stupid because she keeps saying, oh, you got to make your enemy basically focus on one thing while you set the trap. And then by the time they figure out it's a trap, it's too late. They already walked through the trap. And the way Martin was looking at her was hilarious because she don't even realize that what you're claiming that you're doing to the quartermains, Martin and Valentine are doing to your dumb ass and you don't even see it coming. 
Martin got you focused on one thing while him and Valentine are over here setting the track that you're about to walk through and your dumb ass ain't even realizing it. And by the time she probably does piece things together or realize it, it's going to be far too late. And she probably won't even realize it. Stupid. So you're trying to set a trap for the quarter means and you're the one being conned. You're the one being trapped and you don't even see it. You, She don't even see it. And that's the funny part. That's the hilarious part. Like you're sitting here trying to trap them, but you don't even know the person that you think is working on your behalf is actually trapping your ass. Ain't that funny. <laughs> Karma's a bitch, I'll tell you that much. A big, fat, hairy one. Mm -mm -mm. And she's sitting there talking about some old... She trying to compare herself to Sasha, talking about they got a lot in common because Sasha's a liar, talking about Michael Shore know how to pick him or whatever. He has a type. I'm like, first of all, Sasha may have lied, but she's far different than Nell. And even Sasha was having some doubts. And Michael noticed that when Nell said must have struck a chord with her. And she was asking Michael, like, is she the same as Nell? And for me, I feel like Sasha is totally different from Nell. I mean, yeah, Sasha lied, but she had a good reason for lying. It doesn't make it okay. But it was a different type of lie. For a good reason. You know what I'm saying? Nell is just psychotic, gold digger, thirsty. So there's a major difference between Sasha and Nell. Major difference. Um, I just feel like... Sasha... I just have a real feeling that Michael is not going to be CEO of that company for long. Like, I really think it's time for Ned to step up and clean up this nail mess. Like, he he may be the only hope here. But I do kind of foreshadow. I see a who killed Nell. I could definitely see a who done it. Because <laughs> she done racked up the enemies in that town. I'm just saying. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. So Sonny and Jason are trying are talking about what happened at the warehouse or whatever um, with the goon who got shot that Jason shot and Sonny wanted to know, like, did he tell you who was coming for us? And of course, Carly interrupts because she wants to know who's gunning for them. Um, I can't say that I blame her for wanting to know. I mean, she was almost shot, so I could see why. But. It's, so basically, Jason told Sonny and Carly that about Cyrus Renault. So Sonny already knows about Cyrus because his reputation precedes him, basically. So he was in federal custody, but he was still running his organization from behind prison. And apparently they did some more digging and found out that Cyrus was secretly transported to Pittenville. Um, so, of course, Sonny leaves to go get some answers or whatever, because you could tell Sonny and Jason are definitely worried about being enemies with Cyrus. Like, I, obviously, Cyrus does not negotiate. He does not play games and he's not above killing your family. Like, that's just how he is when he wants something. Um, so this is definitely not going to be some easy win for Sonny and Jason. But it was so funny. Because Jason was telling Carly, oh, we could, we might be able to shut this down quickly. Jason, stop giving that girl false hopes because there's no way you're shutting this down quick. If Cyrus is everything that they said he is, there's no way y'all shutting him down quickly. No way. First of all, this dude is in prison and he still runs a major operation out of prison. He has enough pull and power to send a bunch of hitters to try and kill your whole damn family. Does that sound like somebody that you're going to shut down quickly? Doesn't to me. <laughs> Cyrus sounds like he don't play. <laughs> like, seriously. Cyrus sounds like he don't play no games. And think about it like this. The Corinthos organization has battled the Zakara organization for years. And the only reason why the Zakars are not around is because other people took care of it. Not Sonny, not Jason, but other people. Michael got rid of Claudia, even though it was an accident, but he still, you know, did the dirty work. Johnny got rid of Anthony. You know what I'm saying? And Johnny is in prison right now. And, you know, Johnny, there's no telling. He could be still be a threat down the, long, down the road. Johnny could still be a threat. Even from behind prison. So... 
You know, the Corinthos says, I'm like, yeah, I didn't even take care of the Zakars. They pretty much took care of each other, basically, <laughs> if you look at it. Um, so Sonny went to Pentonville or whatever to meet up with Cyrus or whatever. Cyrus really looks like he don't play no games. Like you could tell, like he, you could see it all over his face. He looked dangerous. Like he looked like somebody you don't want to be cellmates with. I'm just saying, like you definitely don't want to get on his bad side. But um, anyway, this was a pretty good episode. I enjoyed this. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see y'all all later. Have a great day. Peace.